What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does the day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. You guys, my book is out. I mean, it is out in the world. I cannot believe it. I have been writing it for several years and it's just mind blowing. Birth Story, Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal is a -a one-of-a-kind discovery into your pregnancy that provides you education through storytelling. So what's it really about? In the 16 years that I have served women with every personality type, I noticed there was a huge disconnect between what my clients were craving for childbirth education in a book and the books that were actually available on the market. There seemed to be unlimited resources. If you are looking for an unmedicated birth or a natural birth or a home birth, but there just weren't a lot of resources for my clients who were part of the 92% of women birthing in a hospital and very much open to medical interventions like an epidural, nitrous oxide, and opioid medications. So I wrote that book to fill the gap for you. Week by week throughout your pregnancy, you will engage with material meant to educate and empower you as you plan for your own birth story, hospital, medicated, unmedicated, or something in between. You are welcomed each week with a postcard from the womb, which is an adorable note from your baby about their miraculous development, as well as the amazing changes occurring within you. Then you are invited to use an uplifting birth affirmation and to respond to an introspective journaling prompt to document your feelings, curiosities, and wonders every single week. With room to memorialize your own birth story, this book will become a memory keeper and a legacy gift for your baby. You are encouraged to read one of my favorite birth stories each week filled with childbirth education, tidbits, and explanations of important medical terms and procedures. These are real-life accounts shared with permission from the births that I've attended during my career as a doula, and I gave you a great mix. In the 42-week guide to your pregnancy and 42 birth stories, seven of them end in cesarean section. About half are unmedicated and the other half are medicated deliveries. This is a judgment-free book. So take what you need from each element and leave the rest. Okay, are you ready to buy? I would love for you to go to birthstory.com and buy it directly from me. But I totally get it if you're an Amazon girl. You can head to amazon.com and just type in birth story pregnancy and the book should pop up. I'll deliver it straight to your doorstep. And I would venture to say that you might be an audiobook kind of woman because you're listening to a podcast. So if you would prefer to listen to this book, then I have recorded it and it is available for download at audible.com or on your Audible app. Thank you for being part of the birth story community. I am so excited for you to have this book in your hand once you've purchased it and it has arrived. I hope that you will give me your thoughts and feedback and don't forget to take a selfie with your book and post it on Instagram and tag at birth story podcast. Hey guys, did you enjoy episode 47 with Matthew and Sarah Bivens with the doing it at home podcast? They're amazing. Continuing on, we decided to do a podcast swap. So episode 48, here we are. It's actually from Matthew and Sarah Bivens and from the doing it at home podcast. 
Hey, I'm Sarah. When planning our home birth, my husband Matthew and I were really frustrated by the lack of empowering and honest home birth resources. So we created this podcast to start a new conversation for moms and families like us. This is Doing It at Home. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Doing It at Home podcast. Today's episode is just so, so awesome. We talk with Melissa, and I had been looking forward to talking to Melissa for a very long time. Melissa has had five home births, five home births. So that's the most home births from anyone that we have spoken with thus far on the show. And they span over the course of 20 years, which is amazing. At the time we speak, her oldest child is 21 and her youngest is seven months. And she has such vivid details and memories of all of them. And they're all beautifully unique. And it's it's just so awesome, like I said at the beginning. So I'm going to shut up and just let you listen in on this goodness. Hi, Melissa. Welcome to the Doing It at Home podcast. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, we're awesome. Yeah, we're doing fantastic. We're enjoying this beautiful day here in Atlanta, and we are super, super excited to be talking with you, and you're all the way on the other end of the country, mm-hmm. which is so much fun. Yeah. So, I, once again, thank I you for am, joining us. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. I, I love what you're doing. Giving exposure to home birth is amazing, mm-hmm. so um, I'm super stoked to be talking to you today. Yes, and you have some experience with home birth, just and we'll, a bit. we'll be getting into that, but just, just to bit. share the context <laughs> of, of that, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family and who's in it? So, um, my name is Melissa, and I live here in gorgeous, amazing Ashland, Oregon, with um, my five kids, and so my first three Babies, I guess they're not they're not babies anymore. <laughs> but my first three, um, I got married to my first husband real young. We were I was eighteen, um, and we then had three children together: Josiah, Elijah, and Eliana. And they are now twenty one, nineteen, and seventeen, so they're basically adults. Um, and then when I was thirty four, I think I met my second husband. And we have Luna, who is four, and Kieran, who just turned 10 months yesterday. So, uh, yeah, lots of babies over my lifetime. <laughs> lots of babies and all of them home births, correct? Exactly. All of them home births. Yeah, starting way back in 1996. Wow. Wow. So, That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, my gosh. So your first... Home birth baby to now, I mean, there's so much we could get into, um, which I want to a yeah. little bit later on how home birth as a as a culture and a concept and an experience has changed over yeah. that time. I, I imagine so it, it has to be insane how different it is. Um, yeah. yeah. So could you, I know each birth, you know, we talked a little bit before we hit record, we could do an entire episode on each one. On each um, birth, right. But what are some of the the highlights or the big things you got out of um, each each birth? I actually want to jump in oh. and ask you this question before yeah. we get into that, Melissa. When okay. you were 19, I want, to, I want to understand, like, was home birth always something that you just knew you were going to do? Was it something, like, how did you arrive mm. at home birth for yourself? Really interesting. So, um, so my ex-husband and I, we got married, you know, young, and we had actually planned to wait a few years before we got pregnant and um, my mom ended up getting breast cancer diagnosed right after we got married and I like panicked you know oh my gosh what if if she doesn't make it I want her to see one of my babies Mm. so that totally changed kind of our plan and we you know I got off birth control and we got pregnant pretty much four months after we were married my mom's amazing and fine and you know like a 22 year survivor now Um, but I didn't say, I never thought about it. I had never thought about it. I was so young. Who, who, who yeah. thinks about that? <laughs> yeah. So um, the only, it was interesting because it was like, I got pregnant and I just knew, 
I didn't want to be in a hospital. I just, oh. I just had this like really strong feeling of, I think I want to do this at home, which I had only known one person in our family who had home birth. Um, and that was my mom's brother. So his wife, all of their children were born at home. Um, and I always thought that was kind of cool, but I it never, I never really thought, well, I'm going to have mine at home. Um, but when I got pregnant, it just felt like the right thing for me. And thankfully, you know, I've really lucked out in the husband department. Both of my husbands have been amazing and just completely on board with it, which awesome. is awesome because mm-hmm. that doesn't always happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so my husband, then Judd, he was like, yeah, let's, let's do it at home. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so that we found a midwife and went from there and it just always seemed like, like the right thing for us. Now, and then was... after your first, sorry, but go, no, ahead. go ahead. Um, I was going to say, and then after your first home birth, it's like no brainer, yeah. <laughs> you know, when everything goes smoothly, like, Oh, okay. We'll just have the second one and then the third one at home. That's so cool. Wow. So yeah. What was the response from your family like when, you know, at 19, when you said, Hey, I'm going to have this baby at home. Um, so I think if they questioned it, they didn't really say, Mm. um, I know, you know, my parents were always really supportive of it. My grandmother was probably the most vocal. She was the most concerned. Um, but everybody was really pretty supportive. I think my ex-husband's family was a little like, what the heck are you doing? But, um, (laughs) But they never, they never challenged us. They never gave us a hard time. They just kind of accepted that this was our journey and our choice. And we always told them, you know, these are really trained professionals. And if something goes wrong, we will end up at the hospital. That's what hospitals are for. So, and, and they had met the midwife. You know, my mom was always really involved in, um, in our appointments. She would come. And so I, they just, they were pretty comfortable with it, which was amazing to have that support system. And I think my my mother has been at every she has been at every single birth, wow. <laughs> which so is cool. awesome. Wow. Yeah, that is really cool. Thank you for for thinking of that, Matthew. I, I wanted to jump right into like talk about the birth. <laughs> but you're like, wait a second, how did we get there? So that's thank you for that right. that backstory. Right, let's do it. Um, are you comfortable now jumping into talking about the birth? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm absolutely comfortable. <laughs> okay. We may proceed. Talk okay, about cool. the birth. <laughs> yes, I want. I just. I mean, each of them must be so beautiful and unique, but I'm, you know, I'm just curious what strings them all together, what some of like the, and then this happened in this one. So, I mean, the floor is yours in in whatever fashion or order you want to talk about this. I, we are open. (laughs) Okay. I'll probably just because it's easier for me to go in chronological order. Sure. That Um, makes sense. Perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise I may get a little confused. So, you know, my first baby was a pretty common, I would say stereotypical, first child labor. I, I don't remember exactly what time contraction started. It's been 21 years, but, um, you know, can, I remember contractions starting kind of light and I called the midwife and I had done in labor and she came over and I was having prodromal labor. So it was, it wasn't super active. Uh, I think I was at about two centimeters when she got there. And so we did the usual, let's walk, let's, you know, just kind of get things moving, go shopping, just get on with your day. And so we did that for pretty much into the evening and contractions never really got super close. Like they always were about five to 10 minutes apart, never got super close together. And, um, I dilated to a six and then kind of stalled out for like, gosh, I think it was like 12 hours or something. And, you know, they're monitoring baby, baby was fine. And finally they said, I think we're going to need to get something going here. So we chose at that point uh, to have them break my waters. Mm. And he actually had like a, almost like a double bald bag. They said it was just like this super thick bag and his head, there was so much water in front of his head. He wasn't engaging because the contra- contractions just, you know, nothing was strong. So they broke my water. And of course, <laughs> Then his head engaged and I was in labor. Oh, and I wow. remember, you know, go, we went for a walk right after they broke my waters and 
coming back up the hill to my house just crying you know I was so young and I was like I don't think I'm ready to be a mom oh, gosh. so it so sticks out in my head and my ex-husband said you don't have a choice now <laughs> <laughs> clear <laughs> and that kind of like snapped me out of it and I was like yeah I guess I don't this baby's coming out uh, and from that point from the point of breaking my water state and being born was about four hours so um I had to I pushed long and hard with him. I think it was about two and a half hours of pushing. I, you know, had minor tearing. I think I got three stitches. And I just remember feeling with that first baby, just feeling at one point, like, I think I'm going to die. I think I might die. It just hurt so bad. And, and my midwife had told me this because I was like, what is it going to feel like? What is it going to feel like? And I remember she looked at me and she said, there will be a point where you think you're dying, but you're not. Hmm. And then your baby's going to be born. <laughs> and that, and it really kind of went like that. I thought, I can't do this. I'm going to die. I, I can't do it. And then, you know, there he was. And, and you forget all about it. Hmm. it. It's just, it's so birth every time that just, it's, it's, it's fascinating to me how you're in so much pain and you think there's no way. I'm doing this again, mm. or there's no way, or there's no way I'm getting through this. And then that baby's in your arms and immediately it's, I mean, yes, I'll do it again. It's just mm-hmm. so amazing. Um, so yeah, so he was born and he, he was tired. It was a long labor. And so he, he didn't really cry when he was born. And I, I woke up that like a couple hours later, we went to sleep, you know, he sort of nursed a little, he didn't, he was just tired and he, we slept for a couple of hours and then I woke up to this baby crying, you know, after what, it was like 36 hours of, you know, kind of drawn out labor. And I just remember being, waking up going, oh, what's that noise? Like, oh my God, I had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and he was, he was such an easy baby. I got totally spoiled the first time, totally spoiled, just a super kind of chill human being. Um, and sweet, just a sweet, mm. sweet human. And he's still sweet at 21. He still is my, he'll come over sometimes just to say, I love you and give me a hug. And when he takes off and goes back home, oh, he still, great. he lives here in, yeah, he lives here in Ashland with his, with his girlfriend. And so it's, it's awesome that I get to see him often. Um, and then my second son, so they're two years apart, the boys are, uh, and and we definitely really planned him. I I just had this feeling, I, I pretty much knew I'm, I'm going to have a boy again. And I want them to be best buddies and I want them to be close together. And so we tried, you know, to get pregnant with Eli and it happened pretty much the first or second month we tried. And, um, and he, so his birth was a little more inter- just unexpected, I guess, uh, you know, after you have your first baby and it's long and it's drawn out, you kind of think, you kind of think labor is that. You don't really, you know, and everybody tells you, well, it gets shorter, it gets easier. But yeah. it, in my head, I just thought that's that's birth. That's what it's going to be. And so we actually had, ju- we were in the process of purchasing our first home and we had moved in with my parents while it closed. And so the plan was we would be moved out and have the baby in our new house. And that didn't work (laughs) Worked out exactly like that. He decided to come a month early. And Mm. it was back then. Now, now you, now most midwives will not do a home birth under 37 weeks. Um, That was in 1988 or 1998. Sorry. And the protocol then was 36 weeks. So I had just made, I had just made 36 weeks to the day and woke up at about 11 was it 11 o'clock at night? I think it was about 11, 11.30 at night. Woke up having contractions. And uh, I left my husband and my older son in the bed asleep. And I thought, I'm just going to kind of go downstairs and walk around and see if this is real labor before I wake anybody up or call the midwife or anything. And I don't know how long I was down there having contractions and walking. And I always do this. I always wait too long. <laughs> this, is, this is the running theme. From this birth on, the running theme is, Melissa waits too long. So <laughs> I <laughs> I thought, well, I'm just going to, you know, I want to wait until I'm like moaning through contractions or something for it to 
to be real, they were in. I went to the bathroom at one point and I had bloody show. And so I, at, then I called my midwife and she was about an hour from where we lived. And so she had to, she had quite a drive to get there. And by the time she got there, I don't know how, I mean, I was close. I was probably hitting transition and I had planned to have a water birth, filled up the tub, got in, got out at one point and labor happened and I never got back in the water. And so I, you know, he was born on dry land, as I like to say. <laughs> so his, his birth was fast. It was like four hours start to finish. And, and his birth was the only birth I can say was not painful. Mm. I feel like, I feel like I just breathed him out. I just was breathing through contractions. It wasn't, I never had that feeling of, oh shit, you know, just, I didn't have that like horrible, intense, you know, sometimes it just hits you like a freight train. I didn't have that with him. It just Mm. was really gentle. The whole birth was really sweet and gentle and I was determined not to tear. So I specifically breathed his head out and tried not I didn't push I never I didn't really bear down until it was time to get his shoulders out and he um yeah he just came out he was my first baby was eight six Josiah was eight pounds six ounces Eli was a month early and he was seven four hmm. which is pretty big for a month early so yeah. he probably would have been a 10, 10 pound baby yeah. um but he he was definitely premature he was really lethargic in terms of nursing, I used, I had to like poke his feet and rub his cheeks and try to wake him up. That first month of nursing with him was really, really hard. It was def- it was a struggle. Uh, and but he his birth was just incredible. And I have actually have somewhere on a VHS tape I have his birth video. <laughs> That's great. I, to, I need it. I need to trans. I know. I need to get it trans transferred to a digital file or something that. Um, yeah, his birth was just awesome. And so then two years late, well, we actually, at that point, we kind of thought, maybe let's let's stop. We have these two boys. They're beautiful. Let's stop having babies. Uh, so we made a vasectomy appointment for him. And two weeks after we had made the appointment, we found out I was pregnant <laughs> <laughs> with, with my daughter. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm so glad she snuck in there. And I got, you know, I got my first girl. Yeah. Um, so each, she's two years younger than Eli. So they're all two years apart, those first three. And again, you know, her birth, I, well, with hers, I thought, well, I went early with my last one. So I expected from like 34 weeks on, I expected was ready and I thought this baby's coming she's probably she might come earlier I might end up at the hospital who knows because a lot of times that happens if you have one early they'll kind of get earlier with each birth Mm. that did not happen she was 41 weeks (laughs) when she decided to be born (laughs) so that last five weeks of my pregnancy I just you know I thought any minute any minute yeah you're ready And I'd have tons of practice contractions, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then finally, it was getting close to Christmas. She was born December 15th. And I think the day before, my midwife said, do you want to try some some cohosh or some herbs to see if we can get things moving? And so she did give me some herbs, and I think that kind of kicked it in the butt. And, um, And her labor was ridiculously precipitous. I... My husband had just left for work. I had the two little kids and it just, I think I'd had like two contractions before he left. And I said, you know, I've been having contractions for a month. This is probably not labor. Back then, we didn't, back then, really aging myself, we didn't have cell phones. He had a pager. And so he's, I said, I'll, you know, I'll page you if if it picks up, whatever. Again, thinking I probably have at least four hours. And he left. And I think it was like half an hour after he left, labor just hit. And I have the most vivid memory of being on the floor, changing my two-year-old's diaper while I was just like moaning through contractions. Oh, wow. And my four-year-old, my four-year-old going, Mommy, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm having a baby by myself because oh, I'm wow. here. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my mom. I paged my my husband, and I think my mom got there. I mean, I, it was a blur. Literally, it was just like 
labor hit and I was just breathing and moaning and trying not to have the baby before people got there. Mm. And so my mom showed up, my husband showed up and shortly after they showed up, I knew I had to push. And I don't know why I didn't. I think it was just because I was so young. I was 23 at that point. And I didn't push. I, I was waiting for the midwife to get there. So I was just on hands and knees, breathing and moaning. And my midwife got there and she checked me. <laughs> and she literally like she had her fingers in checking me. And she pulled her hand out and she looked at me and she goes, go. Oh. And I... <laughs> and, <laughs> And I just, it was two pushes, and she shot out, sprayed my midwife with amniotic fluid. (laughs) I mean, it was it was just like this rocket ship of a childbirth. And I again was planning on birthing in the water. We had the big trough tub in the living room that was about two inches filled when she was born. (laughs) So she didn't get to be born in the water. We did float after, which I have some great photos of us with her, you know, floating. And she was huge. She was nine pounds, 10 ounces. Wow. And um, I didn't care. And she just, I mean, she came fast. And that was Eliana. And she's still kind of that way. (laughs) It's interesting. Like, you can look at your birth and your kids' personalities and think, is there a really, there might be a correlation here. I love that. my My second son is just. I mean, chill almost doesn't describe him. He is like the most easygoing human. Just, okay. Everything's like really slow and easy <laughs> with him. And he's always been the one that takes like a half an hour to put his shoes on. But but it's just pain, you know, it's it's painless with him. And I'm like, that was my birth. And, wow. and Ellie, Ellie's a little bit more, she's intense. She knows what she wants. She knows how to go get it. She's, she's just a big you know she's got this huge gorgeous personality and she had a big birth <laughs> big <laughs> fast birth and it was you know and it's interesting because that her birth was definitely just as painful I guess I would describe you know that that intense sensation as my first son but because once you've had a baby or two I never had that moment of I'm gonna die right. I never had that moment again in childbirth hmm. It, from from that point on, every birth was just kind of like, oh, here's the part that sucks. Okay, <laughs> but knowing knowing that joy that comes after, I mean, it's almost addicting. It's almost addicting that feeling of that slippery little newborn. It's just incredible that moment, which I'm sure you can relate to. But that moment when you're just seeing this little person this little person that was in you the whole time it's it's phenomenal I can't imagine which is why I love being at home because I can't imagine I don't know I, you know I've been to I was a doula for a while so I've, I've been to hospital births and there's just a lot going on you know oftentimes it's, it's a little bit noisier it's a little bit brighter there's more people in and out of the room and and having that moment where it's just so sacred and so quiet and just, ah, oh, it's me and my baby, you know, that sweetness that I think a lot of times you're able to get more at home, especially if there's no complications. And, you know, it seems like midwives are so incredible at giving you that space to just have that first moment that's so precious and you you never get it back. You know, that's your, the first, your, you know, it's your first meeting with your, with your child it's it's precious and um yeah and if you i highly recommend if you can and you're healthy and everything is fine consider it because it's it's just so sweet and then you get to go to your own bed which is like nothing else you know to be able to climb in your own bed with your baby and and have your own food and your you know everything all of that everything that's comfort to you uh in your in that moment is is pretty awesome. I feel really blessed to have had amazing midwives, for one thing. I had the the same midwife with my first three children. And and then, you know, she had retired by the time I had my my last babies. But 
I don't know if we need, if you want me to segue into my children of my Yes, so you took a little bit of a break from the baby making game, (laughs) but then you got back in there. I did. I did. um, So my ex-husband and I, you know, he's an amazing guy. We're, We're great friends and he's a phenomenal father. But we parted ways um, when I was in my early 30s. And so, so yeah, I, you know, I, I didn't ever think I was going to have more children. I didn't even know that I was going to get married again. For, mm-hmm. for one thing, I kind of thought maybe I'll just be, you know, single from this point on. And, um, and I met Joe in a yoga class. And that, I mean, we kind of met and started this amazing friendship and never looked back. Like we just hit it off immediately. And so he is three years younger than me and he had led this phenomenal life of travel and fun. And he landed here in Ashland, Oregon a few months before I met him just kind of randomly. And, uh, I snapped him up, and now he's back here with me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but uh, he, yeah, he didn't have any children. And so it was interesting. It was interesting because we met, we fell in love, we knew, you know, this is, we just knew. It was like coming home, meeting each other. Mm. We just knew we were going to be together for probably the rest of our lives, but definitely a very long time. And, um and so one day he used to travel a lot for work and he was, I think, a day or two away from leaving to go to his, his job. And we looked at each other and he said, I really feel like we should have a baby together. Mm. <laughs> and I said, I really feel like we should too. And we had this conversation before we even discussed marriage. Mm-hmm. But it was like, yeah, I feel like there's a baby that wants to come through us and so we tried one time and she came through I mean she I got pregnant with one try and I thought you know and he he always jokes with me because I'm older than him he's like you know you're you're not getting any younger you're 35 (laughs) or maybe I maybe I was I'm trying to think oh I think I was 34 when I got pregnant Mm. with her and 35 when I had her yes that's correct so so, you know, we kind of both almost thought it might take a while. It might, you know, I may not be as fertile as I was when I was young, and it did not take a while. So, <laughs> and we actually had had, because he'd asked me about my my other three children and, and their births, and so we had had that conversation a little bit. He knew I had had my first three at home. Yeah. And But he said he had never, he said it's interesting because he kind of grew up in cities, and I I was always a small town kind of country girl and he said you know in LA he's like nobody even mentions home birth Mm -hmm. he said it's just you go to the hospital and most of the time you have a cesarean he Mm -hmm. said that's just what what his concept of birth was was you go to the hospital and probably they're gonna do surgery and then you have a baby and uh and so when when I got pregnant and I said we're going to do a home birth. He was like, I had never thought of that, but okay, <laughs> let's do it. Oh, that's cool. So, um, yeah. And I had, I had a really cool nature path who was also a midwife and I had been seeing her just for my women's health. And so, um, and it was funny because before we had made the decision to get pregnant, I had seen her for my annual exam and she looked at me. And she goes, "I feel like I'm going to be seeing you soon because you're going to get you're going to get pregnant." <laughs> and and I did. And so she she was awesome. Um, and we, of course, I planned a water birth again. This time I got it. Which yes. was amazing, amazing. Um, so yeah, Luna's Luna's pregnancy. You know, I kind of went into it thinking, I don't know. It's funny because at 30, 34, 35, that's not old. But because I had my first three so young, I kept anticipating maybe something will be wrong. Maybe, maybe pregnancy won't be as easy. Maybe this, maybe that. Uh And so we even had looked at like possibly finding a doctor who would, who would be our backup in case. And, 
interestingly enough here where I live, doctors are not huge fans of backing up midwives. So really? there are some midwives. No, it's crazy. There are some midwives who have good relationships with doctors. So if you happen to get transferred and that doctor happens to be on call, then you're going to have a great, you know, they, they have, will have a good rapport and, yeah. and all of that. But, but there is not one doctor in our town or in the town close. There's a town a little bit north of us that's bigger that has bigger hospitals and a NICU and, you know, all of that stuff. And nobody in that town will back a midwife. Nobody in Ashland will back wow. a midwife wow. because I think it's a liability thing. I don't know. And so, yeah. Yeah. So we literally couldn't find a doctor. If we said we're planning a home birth, but we want to back up, and they were like, "If you're planning a home birth, we're not backing you up." So, so it was just like, okay, but we won't have a doctor with that we have a relationship with. We'll just transfer if we need to. And but we kind of had that in the back of our heads, like maybe something won't go perfectly this time. And it was totally easy pregnancy, super easy birth. Mm. It, it, it was just it went perfectly. And she was, you know, I think I, so she was born at 2.11 a.m. And I, labor started for me around, it started maybe kind of slowly around 10, 10 I'd say about 10 o'clock. But I wasn't paying, it, it was like, these don't hurt, they're 20 minutes apart. Until they get closer, I'm not calling this labor. Yeah. Because I again, I'd had I'd had multiple contractions for you know weeks leading up, and and so I had a few, and I thought, eh, whatever, eh, I'll go on with, go on with my evening. Tried to go to sleep, and then when I I couldn't really get comfortable, I thought, okay, maybe something's brewing. So we got up, and I sat on the yoga ball for a little while, and around midnight, I had. I walked into the kitchen and a contraction came and I had to moan through it. And Joe kept saying, do you want me to call the midwife, Wendy? Do you want me to call Wendy? And I was like, no, oh, no, it's fine. Let's wait till things really happen. Let's, let's just, and he heard me moan through that and he's like, I'm calling the midwife. <laughs> <laughs> so, because Melissa know, waits too long. We've learned this yeah. by now. <laughs> and so this is, this is his first baby. And he's like, I am calling the midwife. Thank goodness he did. Because by the time she got there, I think it was about, one or maybe yeah it was about 1 1 30 a.m and uh so she came in she said do you want me to check you i was like sure I'm kind of curious where i am she checked me i was eight and a half and she said let's fill the tub so, yes. <laughs> so we uh we filled the tub and and um joe was from the moment we decided to have a home birth he was like i am catching that baby oh that's cool so and you know, and by this point, I'm older, I'm a little bit, I never, I didn't catch any of my first three, but I knew that with this one, I was like, no, I'm catching this baby. You can help, but I'm <laughs> catching this baby. <laughs> so we had both told the midwife, you know, hands off unless you need to touch us, mm. but we're, we're going to do this ourselves. And so, so yeah, we both, we both caught her. I think somewhere that we may have a photo with both of our hands on her as, as she came out. But it was just, you know, easy birth. There was one moment with her that I, you know, it's kind of like you always have this one moment that sticks out about each birth. And yeah. and the one moment with her that stuck out was I was slowly pushing, breathing, trying to ease her head out again, you know, trying, you know, being conscious about not caring. And, and I had flipped around in the tub and, so nobody could really see, really, they couldn't see super well what was going on. And, and I, I remember thinking, okay, so I could breathe through the next contraction or I could just power her head out and be done. And so, so that was the one moment that I really remember. And I like reached down and I just let out this huge like animal scream and powered her head out. Wow. And my midwife, my midwife thought, Okay, that's crowning. She, she's like, okay, so the baby's crowning. I think you might want to turn around so Joe can help you, help you catch. And I turn around, and the baby's head's out. She's like, oh, the whole head. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, all right. So, all right, let's have a baby. And then you know, and then I, we birthed the rest of her, and it was, it was great. It was, you know, he helped catch, and she, she was what I affectionately refer to as my booby baby. She latched on literally like 
bring, brought her to my chest, and she latched on oh, immediately. Wow. That's she really came good. out, yeah, she came out just wanting to nurse a lot for two and a half years, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which she did. And, um, yeah, that, that was great. And then it's interesting because, oh, and so, you know, everybody says, that you're a lot of times, you know, your births get faster and faster and faster. But it, for me, it seems like the last three were kind of, well, Ellie's was a little bit more precipitous, but the, the last ones were all sort of similar in that, you know, the, the, the real intense, tr- what you would call the transition part of labor for me um, does not last long at all, maybe a half an hour. And then, you know, the, leading up to it could be anywhere from, four hours to an hour. So they've all been pretty quick, which is awesome because, you, yeah. I, you know, I feel like I can do pretty much any amount of pain or intense sensation if it's only going to last a couple hours. Right. It's when, you know, it's when it's, it's that like that first baby when it's just so drawn out that, that it gets, it gets really tiring. Mm-hmm. And um, so the beauty for me about having multiple kids is that after I had, actually from my second baby on like right after the birth I just felt great like I'm not tired I feel awesome um you know not worn out like no tearing with any of them so not you know just not sore just it they've been I've been so blessed with really easy amazing birth um and then so after Luna I did I, I wasn't sure I wanted to have another baby um, there's there's 12 and a half years between Ellie and Luna. So there's, you know, a huge gap there. And, and we knew that the older kids were going to be leaving and she would be left an only child, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had a lot of discussions about whether or not we wanted to have another baby. He knew he wanted to have another one. It was more like, I'm actually getting older at this point. Do I want to have another baby? Yeah. And we, tr- we did try when when Luna was two and I had a feeling it was too soon and I did get pregnant and we had a miscarriage and it was a pretty intense miscarriage. I did that at home also um, under the care of a different midwife because my previous midwife had been opened a birth center and she was sort of focused on just doing birth center birth. Mm. And so um, I hemorrhaged a lot wow. and that took it took me I would say a full year to recover from physically oh, wow. and found out we found out that I had um, a thyroid issue I was hypothyroid so I think after I had Luna somewhere in there you know something went a little wonky with my thyroid and so you know after the miscarriage we ran my, my midwife ran a whole battery of tests and found out oh you're hypothyroid and that's probably why you had a miscarriage and so worked with a good endocrinologist and got that under control, which took about another year. So, you know, by the time I got to where I was like, I'm feeling good, my thyroid levels are good, everything's great. You know, at that point, I was um, 39. And what was I, let me see, when was I born? I got to think about when it, so 38, I was 38. And I told Joe, I said, okay, I will do this one last time. And if something happens and we have a miscarriage, I'm not doing it again. Mm -hmm. And so we, we tried and we got pregnant immediately. And, you know, there was that fear this time that was different with Kieran is that there was, because I had never had a miscarriage. I'd never had that fear of that first trimester worrying about losing a baby. Right. It just had never crossed my mind. So, you know, with his pregnancy, that the first trimester was rough. Mm -hmm. I kept, you know, every time I'd go to the bathroom, I was like expecting blood. And, um, and it never came. Thank God, because he is awesome. (laughs) Um, (laughs) He's a cutie. But, you know, he is a cutie. Yeah. And, and looking back, you know, I, it's interesting because I had my first three, two years apart and then got pregnant with that baby that we miscarried when Luna was two and as hard as that miscarriage was and as difficult as that experience was 
I actually wouldn't change it. I wouldn't take it back. Um, for one thing, it's given me such compassion and understanding that I never had for women who have lost a child. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, being able to relate to friends and even, and it was interesting, so many women came forward saying, I've lost a baby, I've lost a baby, mm-hmm. who close to me, women close to me that I'd never known. My mother-in-law, she's lost two, you know, just all these women came out of the word work who were close to me, who had never shared their stories. So that was, you know, in that sense, that's, that was a blessing. And it also gave me another two years with Luna, essentially, for it to just be the two of us. And so I got to really experience her in a way that I never got to experience my other three. Right. Oh, I yeah. had, you know, I had, I had that full four years with her of just soaking her up and really thinking like, this is probably my last child. Mm. So um, that was amazing. And it's so, it was so much easier. Oh my gosh, having a newborn and a four-year-old. So much easier than having a newborn and a two-year-old. Like, (laughs) night and day. Night and day easier. I'm taking notes. Um, Yeah. Yeah. We're we're looking at each other because we've talked about that two-year mark. I'm like, oh. (laughs) Yeah. I seriously, I mean, it's great if you want them to be best friends, which my boys are still best friends. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's a hard age gap. You got to be, you got to be ready for it. Um. So I'm glad that I had that time with Luna and then got pregnant with Kieran. And again, you know, older, 38. I turned 39 when I was pregnant with him. I thought it's going to be harder. You know, I'm really like, I'm almost 40. This is going to be, this might not be like Luna's. And I think, I think because I was so determined to not have a difficult pregnancy with him. And because I had the miscarriage scare, I was so good about self-care during my pregnancy with him. Mm -hmm. I went to acupuncture almost weekly from the very beginning. I saw my chiropractor every couple weeks, every month, you know, somewhere every month at the beginning, every couple weeks at the end. I got massages every month. And then at the last month of my pregnancy, I got one every week. I, I pampered myself yeah, and it was the like easiest, it. it was the easiest pregnancy That's I've had at, at 38. It was the easiest pregnancy I've had. Wow. The only exception to that was I had morning sickness for the first time. I'd never been sick with any of my others and I definitely was barfing with him, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> which kind of made me feel good there during the first trimester. I was like, well, I'm still puking. Must be, must be healthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Must be going that normally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And his birth was pretty similar to Luna's, I would say. Um, I had a different midwife this time. So I had a different midwife with Luna and a different midwife with my miscarriage. And then when I got pregnant with Kieran, it was kind of that same thing with my first baby where I had, I, I do birth photography as well. So I had done births with different midwives. And um, in the time between my miscarriage and getting pregnant with Kieran, I had done a birth with another midwife. Kara and we just really hit it off and she's she's my age exactly and so it kind of felt like this sisterhood instead yeah. of a instead of a mentorship which at that point in my life I really just wanted kind of like a friend who had enough tr- medical training that she could deal with something that came up but I didn't want I didn't I wanted to be in charge basically right. Mm -hmm. and um and she really gave me the space to do that which was amazing and so again jill and i fought over who's gonna catch the baby (laughs) Um, (laughs) and he definitely got his hands on kieran i'd say a little more than than when he he was all about it he wore a gopro on his head oh wow and (laughs) and so the video footage that you saw of his birth was from the gopro on joe's head (laughs) <laughs> Whose idea was and, that? Uh, so, um, it was mine. It was mine. And I'm kind of bummed because the angle wasn't perfect. And so you couldn't see his hands catching too. You mm-hmm. could in the photos, which is great. But you couldn't see his hands catching in the video because he didn't have it angled down enough. But mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. You still got to see it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, Kieran's birth was, I, I kept telling him, now, I, I think this might have worked. The entire time I was pregnant, I kept telling him, we're going to wake up in the morning 
and then labor is going to start because I don't like being tired. I need my sleep. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so I kept, I kept saying, okay, little baby, we're going to wake up in the morning when, when you, when it's time, especially those last few weeks, I just kept telling him, you know, I'd have contractions. They, I would always have my like little chunks of Braxton Hicks towards the end um, at night. And so I kept telling him, you can have some contractions, but then I'm going to sleep. But if you want to be born, you're going to do it in the morning. And he listened. So I think I woke up at four in the morning with some contractions like 20 minutes apart. And I slept through them till, oh, probably eight. And then, um, cause it was like, I mean, they may have even been a half hour apart and they weren't painful. It was just the sensation of maybe something starting. And then we woke up and they stayed 20 minutes apart until, till about 10 in the morning when the midwife, I think, and then I think they started, yeah, about 10 in the morning, they started to be maybe 10 minutes apart, maybe 9.30 in the morning, they started to be about 10 minutes apart. So I called the midwife and said, I've been having contractions, you might want to think about maybe coming over. And because she kept telling me, I want you to call me if anything happens, because you wait too long. I have time to set up my stuff. And so, so I called her early. And she came about, I think she ended up getting here about 10. And I, you know, it was like, I wasn't, I mean, it didn't even feel like labor. I was like, yeah, I'm having some contractions. No, I don't have to moan through them. Yeah, they're fine. She's like, do you want me to check you again? And I, I thought I wasn't going to get checked, but then you're in that moment and you're so curious. So I was like, okay, check me. I think I was about seven and, and still like talking and everything was fine and contractions were far apart. And, and so her, she had a great um, assistant midwife who said, you know, if you want, we could give you a homeopathic if you want the contractions to get closer together. And I was like, sure, let's make them get closer together. So they literally gave me the homeopathic. I got in the shower and the next contractions were like five minutes apart. Wow, it, it happened so fast. Yeah. And, and then, um, and then we filled the tub and I hopped in and I didn't really have, I think a little bit different from the other births. I never really had a super intense urge to push with him. I, I like, I know I was kind of pushing, but I wasn't, I didn't really mean, I didn't really feel like I needed to bear down hard until his head was already out. Or maybe just that last little bit getting his head out. I'd have to watch the video back to remember. But um, but there was kind of this feeling. It was a weird feeling of needing to like move my hips around. Almost, I think his head was a little malpositioned, and so I just kind of felt like I needed to shift my hips a lot during the contractions. And then um, and then finally, I could, like feel his head the whole time, like right there. But it took a while. I think it took like forty minutes. I mean, most of the, so I think by the time I got in the cut tub, you know, I think I went from seven to 10 really fast and then got in the tub and was like, eh, I could just hang out here for a while. <laughs> this feels and nice. So, <laughs> I'm just going to chill here. <laughs> I'm just going to hang out. And, um, yeah. And then, you know, I and, but pushed, oh, what was interesting. So we pushed his head out and I had told her, I want to sweep for the cord and you can't see this on the video, but I had, I had swept for the cord and I didn't feel anything. So but Joe and I, the whole pregnancy, kept talking about, I feel like the baby, this baby's going to have the cord around his neck. Oh. And so the midwife swept through the cord, and she couldn't feel anything. And so we thought, all right, well, I guess I was wrong. I guess we were no cord. Okay, whatever. And in that moment, even Joe and I looked at each other like, hmm, interesting. We were expecting that cord. And then pushed him out, and I start to bring him up, and I see the cord. And mm. I was like, oh, cord. And so I kind of started to unwrap it. My midwife reached over and got it off his his neck real quick. And, you know, we bring him up. And it's interesting because a lot of people see that video and they're like, oh, my gosh, the baby was blue. The baby had the cord. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, he was struggling. And and what's, what's really important to remember about babies when they are born, most of them are blue in color before they take their first breath. Mm. And then they pink up. Um, and, and, and my midwives have all said the most important thing to assess is their tone. So does the baby come out floppy or does the baby come out wiggling and moving and, 
and, you know, full of tone in their body. And so he came out and you can see him kicking and moving his little arms and his little face pops up and it looks like he's holding his breath and he's, you know, kind of, it took him a little while to take that first breath. It may have taken a minute or so um, for him to take his first breath and have his, his little cry. Mm. And then, um, and then he did and he pinked right up and started to nurse shortly after. And his birth was really cool um, in that we, we took the time to just stay in the water for a long time and, and we let him float and there's some really cool photos too of him floating and he just kind of like unfolded his little body and was hanging oh. out in the water floating and wow. it was really sweet. It was a really sweet birth. Mm. And my 17 year old, Ellie, is the one who took the phenomenal photos yeah, of his birth, so cool. which was wow. so cool. It was so cool. And, um, and she did a great job, man. She did a great job. And she was at, she was at Luna's birth and she was at Kieran's birth and she's just like all about it. Yeah. She's not, she's not afraid of, of birth at all, which is great. I'm glad she got to have the experience of seeing home birth and, um, and what that can be like. And she can make the choice for herself, you mm-hmm. know, when she's an adult and ready to have babies, but at least she's had good exposure. So, um, yeah, I've had just awesome births. Wow. It's been pretty cool. And oh. we're done. Yeah. <laughs> and proceed. <laughs> wow. Um, and I'm 40, and so that's it. <laughs> five home births over the course of 20 years from when, you know, yeah. your first birth or one of them, you have a VHS tape to now a GoPro <laughs> yeah. and a video that right. you know thousands of people have seen. Like, what a yeah. what a journey! <laughs> yeah, total journey, total journey. And it was you know back in 1996, like there were not very many people having home births. No, um, I would imagine not. And I think you know I think it's a little more talked about now, and maybe a little. I, I don't want to call it mainstream because it is certainly not mainstream. But there are more people who are starting to question whether or not the hospital is the right place for them. And, and I think that's awesome. You know, we have more options in terms of birth centers and, uh, and even midwives practicing in hospitals. Uh, a lot more options than we did in 1996 when I had my first baby. Mm-hmm. But, but I think it's still, you know, home birth is still kind of seen as this extreme thing. You know, people tell me all the time, oh, you're so brave. Yeah, to have a home yeah. birth. And I think, you know, for me, the hospital was more scary because I, I, I know the, so often the train that you can jump on when you go into, you know, especially as having done work as a doula of it, that a lot of times, you know, women are made to feel like they shouldn't feel pain mm-hmm. in childbirth. And so there's this, you know, constant offering of, do you want something or, or just an expectation that you're going to get an epidural at some point. And so, you know, when do you want your epidural and how long do you want to wait? You know, and it's just not that, not that that's bad, but there are so many complications that can happen when you start that down that road, you know, down the, let's, let's induce a little with Pitocin and let's introduce this and introduce, you know, it just, it messes with, the natural progression of labor, which can then cause some, some pretty big complications in, in my opinion and in what I've seen. And, and I just, I love, I love talking to women who have done it naturally, whether at home or whether in a hospital, because the the feeling of accomplishment, I mean, it's, it's really indescribable how you go from questioning your strengths and what you can do to being so solid in like, wow, I did this. I can do anything. Mm-hmm. I birthed a freaking human. Naturally, I felt this level of pain that I didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. And I not only survived, but I rocked it and I got this amazing little human and you know, you just, you come out of it with such a sense of self and empowerment that it ma- it kind of makes me sad when women don't get that from their birth. 
you know, when they, when they feel gypped or they feel like they were out of their own body, it, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit because it, I think it really is such a great way to come into yourself as a woman and be like, I have got this. I am so strong. Nothing can shake that now. And I think, you know, I think especially in a culture where, you know, women are often objectified and we're, we're considered to be weaker in some ways. And man, you have a baby naturally and you're like, damn, I am not weak. I am not weak. I am so flipping strong and so much stronger than I knew. And damn, you try doing that, hubby. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you try feeling that and then let's see, let's see if you can do it. You know, it just, it's, it's so empowering that, that I really want that for women. Yeah. And I, mean, I hope, I hope, go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's, it's something that has come up in a lot of our interviews. The, the moment of transformation yeah. that, that yeah. moms experience yeah. when they give birth and then for the partner, you know, for the husband or partner, if, if they have the ability to be there and witness their, you know, their partner giving birth, like there's a transformation right. that happens with us as well. And that's, it's Absolutely. powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, what I do, what I love about home birth too, is that the dads are able to be so involved. Yes. Mm. Yes. To, you know, to whatever degree they want. And, and, you know, I, I just, I remember during my first three births, my, my ex-husband was always behind me, just supporting me and, and, you know, rubbing my neck and my hair and, and sobbing, you know, I have picture of him sobbing after his babies were born and like for him you know that experience was so powerful for him too that being able to to be you know connected to me physically and you know and and feel it in a way through my body you know and and be able to kind of attach to the moment through my body I think is so powerful for the dad too and then and then my husband Joe now you know him being able to to catch the babies and to know like that I want to do that. I want to catch the baby. I want to be the first, one of the first people touching my baby. And, and that, that those moments for him were transformational. And he said, he said, I will never get the opportunity to do this again in my life. I'm making it count. Mm, wow. You know? Wow. I, yeah. He, so I, I think you're, you're so right, Matthew, that, it transforms the dads too. And, and really allowing a dad to be involved to the level with, with, to, to which he's comfortable. You know, some dads, some guys are like, ah, yeah. sure. which is great, you know, but, but if you really want to be involved, you know, I think that you should be allowed to be. And I think oftentimes, you know, if a woman's stuck in a hospital bed or has IVs hooked up to her or whatever, you know, you just can't really physically be involved to the, to the extent that you might want to be as the dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any experience with birth in a hospital, but I can just imagine with the doctors and the nurses and everyone else who's who has the experience and then the authority that you know a, a father or a partner has a much harder time being a part of the experience. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and that connection as a couple, making that connection and having those moments, you know, of of sweetness and eye contact between contractions and yeah, hugs and yeah. kisses. And it, it really solidifies your bond as well as a couple. I think it's, I think it's so beautiful that we, that we, I love that we're getting to share our home birth stories for people to hear. Uh, because I, I don't think it's talked about, you know, I think that, you know, like my husband, he just assumed aren't babies just born in the hospital mm, and don't yeah. they just, cut them out most of the time and you know aren't cesareans kind of the normal and and so you know for him to get to to hear my stories even before we got pregnant with Luna and Kieran and I think it's really important for people to know that birth can be it can be different it doesn't have to be in a hospital yeah saying you know I'm glad we have doctors and hospitals for emergency situations because they're there are times when you need to transfer, and I've been to those births. I've been to those home births where, you know, the, something goes wrong, and and they need to transfer, and 
thankfully we have that. But I, I would love to see us get back to healthy, low-risk pregnancies being attended by midwives primarily. You know, whether it's in a birth center or a home setting, I just think that the care model is so much more woman-centered yeah. and family-centered that I would love to see us as a, as a country get to a place where that's considered normal. I think that would be awesome. I don't know if we ever will, but... You know, you guys are helping out. We're working on it. <laughs> sure. We're working on it over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Melissa, for, yeah. for being a part of this with us and by sharing your stories. I mean, shoot, I'm going to be calling you. The <laughs> for some, I mean, five babies like you have. You have um, not just in birth, but I'm sure so much more knowledge that yes. we didn't even skim the surface of. So for you to take okay, that time yeah. and share, you know, your treasures and your gifts with us and with our listeners, we are very grateful. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm I feel honored to be able to to share and to help normalize something that is normal that our bodies are made to do it's it's a it's an honor to get to share share my stories of my my babies yes yes and give our love to all of those babies big and small because they're always your babies even if they're 21 still your baby so it's true it's true you just get to you just get to have a beer with them yeah (laughs) right on right on that's awesome Yeah, Melissa, you you rock, and uh, your you know your birth stories are powerful and inspiring, and you know I, I love that you've had five births and they were all different, right? Like there were they were you know, there were similarities, there were there were things that were kind of common throughout, but um, it's just a beautiful thing that that birth is always unique and always different, and you know you you get to experience experience yourself new each time, and you know we're just very grateful. Absolutely. Yeah, we're grateful, like Sarah said, that you'd come on this this show and share your stories. And I know our listeners have have um, really picked up a lot, and just from from your words and your experience. And once again, we want to say thank you, thank you so much. Oh yeah, thank you guys.